Hello everyone, I'm Han Wang. I'm a second year PhD student at the Center for High Performance Power Electronics from The Ohio State University. I'm going to talk about our project, Artificial Intelligence-Based Current Sharing for Parallel Operation of 3.3 kV Silicon Carbide MOSFET Chips in Power Module, supported by Power America. As we know, in high power application, power devices need to be connected in parallel. That may cause uneven current sharing problem due to the device parameter distribution and asymmetric layout. The objectives of this project is to apply artificial intelligence on wideband gap power devices current sharing problem to achieve higher reliability and longer operational lifetime. Meanwhile, we will design and package a 3.3 kV silicon carbide MOSFET power module to apply control algorithm and lifetime testing. Let's move on to the power module design. In our proposed module, there are six dies inside the module to build a half-bridge structure. Three upper switches and three bottom switches. Totally six current sensors, six current boosters, and one NTC resistor are integrated inside the module. This can help us monitor the current of individual die, the temperature of the whole module, and we can also apply algorithm with very good gate control. Decoupling capacitors are also integrated in the module to reduce the power loop inductance. Drain and gate terminals are lead out by test pins for gate signal monitoring and desaturation protection. To verify the module design, we did thermal and electromagnetic simulation using ANSYS ice pack and Q3D extraction. For the thermal simulation, we set heat dissipation of each die to be 90 watts and applied forced air cooling. The result shows that the maximum junction temperature is below 150 degrees C, which is within the device limit. For the electromagnetic simulation, the solver is set to be 30 MHz, and the result shows the power loop AC inductance is 21 nanohenry. Indicating while current sensors are integrated in the module, the straight inductance is still acceptable. The fourth part I'm going to talk about is AI implementation. We are going to use three AI algorithms, supervised learning classification for degradation type recognition, supervised learning regression for the remaining useful life estimation, and the reinforcement learning for the device remaining useful life balancing control. For the degradation type classification, we will train the AI model by collecting device parameter data and classifying this to different degradation types, such as gate oxide degradation and stack faults. Once the features of these different types of degradation are well trained and recognized, we can classify and degradation uh, classify the degradation using online merit data. Then, we'll apply regression to estimate the remaining useful life. It is a mapping process between the detectable device parameter and undetectable parameters, which are more likely to represent device health status. For example, we will use the turn on current, turn on voltage, and device temperature to map the device virtual voltage and on-state resistance. And then, we'll use these crucial data to estimate the health status and estimate the device remaining useful life. Finally, we'll apply reinforcement learning for the remaining useful life balancing control. The training process is that we'll change the control variables like the gate voltage uh, and the gate resistance to observe the remaining useful life changing. And then we'll apply proper control variable strategies for each device based on the training result to balance the remaining useful life. The conclusion of this project right now are that 3.3 kV power module with integrated current and temperature sensor has been designed and verified by simulation. Secondly, the AI approach has been demonstrated to achieve device degradation classification and remaining useful lab estimation and balancing control. Thanks for your listening.